Lie, Cheat, and Steal, the podcast about liars, frauds, thieves, and bullshitters. I'm your host, Pat Royce. Uh, to let you know, we do two episodes every month uh, here in our free feed. And if you like what you hear, you can get two more episodes every month by signing up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. We're also on social media. We are on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, all at lie, cheat, steal podcast. Uh, also, on our Patreon, we have ad-free episodes, and you get access to our Discord chat. That's really cool. And if you guys are having a good time and you're enjoying what we what you're hearing, go ahead and leave us a five star rating, leave a review. That helps us get the word out. That being said, uh, I am here today with, as always, with my co-host Kath Barbadoro. How you doing, Kath? Hi, Pat. I'm good. I'm uh, I'm excited to have another guest episode. We do. Yeah, this we is, we have we have. This is big. this is big. We are we're out of our bubble in a huge way. We are here <laughs> with. We say friend of the show to anyone right. who we know, okay. so we're going to call you a friend of the show because it's your first time being on here. That's the lingo we use, but we have friend of the show, uh, just legendary Austin figure, globe-traveling comedian, uh, and I, I, I should have learned the word stunt performer. When it, I don't, when, 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 I've been calling myself a professional freak for 30 years. Professional now, so. freak. There we go. All right. <laughs> I feel it's the only thing that really covers the whole ball. It takes all those things and just makes it right there. Professional there, freak. Professional freak. I was going to suggest that to Pat, but then I was like, I don't know if that's like a, a slur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's people. I mean, you know, I've got freak tattooed on my chest. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guilt free. Yeah. Hit him with it, baby. But is it, I mean, is it something we can say or is it? <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that, is that y'all's word? You know, I've, I've, I've loved playing with that sort of, sort of idea that, that sort of stuff. I mean, you guys have seen me do sets yeah. where I've referenced the, because there are a lot of parallels because what it comes down to, as a freak is that you're other and much like a lot of other words yeah. and, and slurs with, with freak is that there was kind of a reclamation of freak. And it really, that really kind of goes back to the sixties where you saw freak started to become a popular positive yeah, slang yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. That's where, that's where, because before that, yeah, calling somebody with freak was like, you know, how to start a fight, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, you freak, and yeah. Oh, yeah, who you calling a freak? And then, yeah. you know, the fists go up like Popeye and shit, you know, well, well, let's get the full introduction out here. Professional freak, right. the lizard man, Eric Sprague. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you. Thanks, hey, on, good to man. be here, man. Hi, Eric. Yeah, I, so we, uh, you, you've been a mainstay in the Austin comedy scene. Like I said, you also travel all over the world. We'll mm -hmm. get into we'll get into all that in just a little bit, but that's how me and Kath know you. Yep. And I think we were I, we were outside of somewhere one night, mm -hmm. and uh, what, it wasn't here, was it? <laughs> no. No, we were outside of somewhere, and we were talking about the podcast, and I was like, I, I want to get you on sometime. Outside the Valve. Outside of the Valve, that's outside where it was. Valve, yep. Few blocks from here, yep. but uh, yeah, we wanted to get you on, and we uh, so we wanted to talk today. Like I, I just want to talk to you. I just want to hear a little bit about your story as well. Right. But we brought you on today because we have uh, we've done a few episodes that brush up against carnival scams. Right. Of course, we did the episode about Jeff Jarrett. Kath did that was an excellent episode about Jeff Jarrett, the wrestler who is like kind of throws back to the wrestling used to be a part of the circus. Right. That was a, a traveling wrestling show. Yeah. Was it was something that would often be part of a carnival. It's just in the structure. Like when you've got a carnival, you've got, you know, usually, you know, today you've got rides and food dominated yeah. because it's a carnival is almost always a for-profit thing unless you know even if it's a charity thing that's the reason they do it is that it produces revenue it is geared towards that yeah. every every square foot of a carnival lot has to generate a certain amount of revenue at the end of yeah. the day and that's where they're focused well and that's what and that that leaves a lot of room open for like uh the kind of stuff we love to talk about flip yeah. flam scamming and like jeff jarrett he, he comes from a legacy <laughs> it goes all the way back to like his like family started out like the old school yep. wrestling thing. So we want, yeah, we. I figure it's a it's a place ripe for scams. Obviously, we're mm -hmm. going to start off here with a quote, uh, which I looked up. So basically, there's a sucker born every minute and two to take them. Yep. P.T. Barnum quote, but as you enlightened me to in our chat before the show, he never actually said that. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's which kind of proves the adage, but it seems like it's cast a shadow mm -hmm. over. And not necessarily a bad one. People kind of know what's up. They go to a, a, a circus or a carnival. They know. The carnival barker's a little shady, selling you on something. I think it's part of the but thrill. It's the it's There's the modern a... take of it. It's the modern interpretation because we, you know, we've seen the history. We've seen yeah. these guys. You know, you guys have a podcast dedicated to people who've pulled off yeah, yeah. these scams <laughs> and these cheats, right? So they become legendary. People have become a little bit wiser to it. So you have to take it, find a new way to take advantage of the audience. Yeah, you've got them hooked on the idea of scams and cheats. So you'd be like, oh, well, you you like 
tall tales. You like scams. You like wondrous things. Well, I've got the most wondrous, the tallest yeah, of tall yeah, tales. I've yeah, got yeah. the <laughs> biggest cheat. I've got something so diabolical. I'll tell you it's fake, and you won't believe me. You'll have to because you won't be able to figure out how. Yeah, that's, that's the modern twist yeah. on continuing the legacy. That's great. Yeah. I think there's a real like pleasure in uh, being scammed in a certain mm-hmm. way. I think I think people do like it. I mean, that, I'm I'm a pro wrestling fan. Yeah. Like I think that is some of the appeal is like people in sort of they like to be like consensually deceived. It's 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 a it's a shared fiction, and everybody and everybody yes. understands if we all follow the rules of this fiction, it's going to be really cool, and we're going to yeah. have a great time. And yeah, and when somebody. Right. It's and it's one of the only contexts really where if somebody breaks those rules, you can really kind of you see that get turned on. Like it doesn't, and they yeah. you know people are very right. protective of wrestling. Wrestling fans in particular. Yeah, yeah. Right? Still, <laughs> well, still yeah. real to me, damn it. Yeah. yeah well, I I got taken it. But I think there's like a I think I think sort of carny stuff in mm-hmm. general that has a charm to it. Like well, and that's that that's the, the that's the sort of again like we're talking about with with Barnum now. You've got a quote attributed to him, which is perfectly in line with our modern understanding of who he was, but yeah. was not at all right. how he was seen in his own time. So when right. when the legend outgrows the truth, you print the legend, right? So that's yeah. printing the legend. The mm-hmm. printing the legend today of the carny folk and things like that, or, you know, running away with the circus, that's very much, you know, more taken from movies and pop culture than actual reality. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. something how, like, they, they say that the um, uh, Wall Street, uh, a stockbroker used to be a very boring job. Right. And, like, they would even hold that up as, like, in, like if you watch, like, old late night bits or comedian yeah. bits, that was a thing of, like, a boring guy as a stockbroker. Yep. And it was, like, then Gordon Gre- Gordon Gecko came out in, yep. in Wall Street in the 1980s. And huh. they, they, people who were in that period back then cocaine. said, Yeah, the cocaine, too. too. It had everybody <laughs> thinking they were real hot shit. And, uh, but, yeah, they were, like, talking about, like, it changed the, uh, the tenor of the whole scene because people were like there was people coming in and starting out like I'm Gordon Gecko yeah yeah good. people coming in like yeah. I'm gonna disrupt this place I'm gonna fucking blow the doors off this yeah Whereas before people were coming in with long term they were Warren Buffett right you yeah know, Warren Buffett is an amazing investment but he didn't come in kicking in doors right? yeah it's he, a he, smart he, sound investment yeah, he rolled yeah. up and went hey this stuff always wins it's not exciting but it always wins yeah <laughs> there you go I mean, well that's why it's not exciting because it always wins yeah yeah it's yeah boring exactly. as hell it's a boring it's just, thing there's no risk. <laughs> So, yeah, I want to get into this. So, we, uh, yeah, so carnivals, circuses, sideshows, mm-hmm. freak shows, these American institutions, they occupy a wide spectrum in our public consciousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun places where you can go with the family, see talented performers, train animals, do stunts. But, like we just said, yeah, it's also a place where you can get real drunk in a field that's usually <laughs> vacant, but for one magical week, <laughs> it's filled with lights and fantasy. Uh, so I wanted to to talk to you, really just kind of get into, uh, because you're not just some guy that knows about Carnival. This is like you've b- built an entire life and career and legacy out of this. So what was your introduction to that to those, this world? Well, I mean, I started off as sort of anyone does going after anything. You know, if you're an 18-year-old and you're going into comedy, you've got all these dreams and aspirations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's nothing like that at yeah. all. Whatever you're thinking, you're, you're wrong. You know, if it's... Well, it was the same way, except for I was going after something that was a little bit weirder. And, you know, because it had nearly sort of died out, well, a lot of like the sideshow stuff in the 70s and 80s really sort of cratered because, well, entertainment as a medium had changed a great deal. And the, mm-hmm. the logistics of traveling shows and what people would accept. Like, and also you had a, you know, a smarter crowd. This was a, a growing phase, if you want to look at it that way, for these types of shows where they had to figure out what the new audience was going to take. Kind of like we were just talking about with like, mm-hmm. oh, well, you can't sell Barnum at face value anymore, but you can sell him as a master hoaxer. Yeah, right? that's, yeah. That's how, we under, that's mm-hmm. how we buy him as a product, as a character. Now, and so much so, it's colored most of our ideas about it. Yeah, we think there's always a scam, there's always a joke, but as Kath was saying, some people like to be scammed in a certain way. Yeah. And that's where you get where like the one-off showman, the people who do things like the six-foot man-eating chicken, now outside, there's pictures of giant, mm. you know, like fighting cocks with flames from hell, and you know, bodies and skeleton, whatever. All this to conjure up this idea in your mind of a giant chicken inside. And when you go inside, it's literally just a dude who's six feet tall eating a bucket <laughs> of chicken. When you come in, he'll say like, "Hi, how you doing?" Smile like, that. and everybody like, "Ha ha." I bet that guy was six one. Bullshit, yeah, right? Like, <laughs> but the, the, idea, the idea behind these shows and these, uh, and it's even stuff like you know, um, the, the Rat King, the largest rodent, the most fearsome rat in the world trapped in the new york city sewers you go inside and it's a capybara 
And the capybara <laughs> is there. It's actually, now it is technically the largest rodent in the world. Yeah, yeah. But it is also the cutest little son of a bitch yeah, you're yeah, ever yeah, going to see, yeah. right? Friend you're like, to all animals. Yeah. But, so if you make it cheap enough and you make it clever enough, People will actually be your business, your business model, and you want to let a few people in. You actually kind of want to let the secret out because people will go like, "Oh, you yeah. got to go see it. You got to go see it." You know, it's and once you've had a trick played on you, what do you want to do? Play that same trick on somebody yeah, else? Bring you somebody else in. I mean, yeah, bring somebody else in. Why yeah. I've for years when I'm doing sideshow, especially when I'm doing like festivals um, where there's kids and stuff about, I do this little magic trick where I tell people it's the one where you put your hands out in front of you, turn them over, and interlock them, and then you check around the crowd, and then you put your hands back and then you can untwist your hands, but they can't. Yeah. And there's a whole move when you take your hands apart. And I explain that to people as, you know, oh, it's a, a little kid's trick and you can play it on your kids when you get home. But the value of knowledge is not in its possession, but it's its application. If you go down to the bar tonight and challenge somebody to do what you do or they buy the next round, they're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. Now you got to yeah, be yeah. smart about it, right? Mm-hmm. You got to win one drink at one bar, then you go to another bar <laughs> and you do it there. You don't explain it to anybody or you can, if you want before you go, but you just yeah. keep hopping around. If you do that, right, you got free drinks the rest of your life. And yeah, you know, <laughs> that comes back to like where I first started really getting into scamming again. Is I had this idea of, Oh yeah. You know, the carny folks, they know secrets, they know tricks, they know ways to get over on people. And yeah. you know, I was not the, uh, let's say most ethical young man. Yeah. <laughs> for uh, yeah. that. I'm not unfamiliar with that. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I was like, I, I want in on this. There's a yeah, shortcut. Yeah, yeah. I want in. You know, get me down there. Mm-hmm. What can I do? And you know, it turns out that the the scam is really kind of built into the fabric of the business more so than what people think. But they found that there was a new business in selling people the stories about the the games. Most of the stuff that you're told about mm-hmm. is like how to rig a game is just, you know, sometimes there is bad equipment, but usually the risk of rigging the game is not worth the potential trouble, and also you're already making money no matter what happens. This is, you got to look at carnival games the same way you look at a casino, right? Yeah. They always walk away with the larger take. No matter how, if you can win the big mm-hmm. dog, you can win whatever, they're always winning, so why are they going to risk m- fucking that up yeah, yeah. for a couple extra dollars? It's, yeah. it's, it's a risk-reward thing that just doesn't make sense. In fact, a lot of these things, if you think about it, don't make a lot sense like because it is carnival really where because it's you know we get carny and yeah. uh you know and that's a, a real sort of that's like some people there's not a lot of the old old timers left but if you call them that they'll get angry about yeah. it because they know that it mm-hmm. was never said as a reclaimed it, yeah, term yeah, yeah, yeah. for them Positive. yeah it never, <laughs> went, it never went through that, that yeah. reimagining yet. yeah and so <laughs> You know, they'll they'll take that very serious. But the, again, in modern times, there's a lot of people like, oh, we're carnies, we're punk rock. You know, it's yeah, sort of yeah, into yeah. That, that sort of uh, deal. But if you look at how carnivals operate, right, they're usually they hire a lot of local people for the help. So if you're saying the people who work at the carnival are just going to take it like, but aren't that aren't they yeah, you yeah, guys? Yeah, yeah. Like, those, those are your kids. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, they yeah, hire yeah. the local teenagers. <laughs> like, so your kids are scum is what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, uh, again, like I say, like, they wouldn't be doing a lot of this stuff that the, the story is like, I'm not saying it never happened, right? It's kind yeah. of like urban legends. It happens once and then everybody claims it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I was, we, I, we, you, you drew the parallel to comedy earlier. Like, you know, me, like we all know about that. You get a comedy, go to open mics. What do you, what, what's the entrance? What's the foot in the door? Who do you, who do you go and talk to? Who do you, uh, you, I, uh, I advise a, uh, a, a life of relative isolation. So yeah. I was, I was, in, I was in upstate New York, like even when like, so the, the town I grew up in and graduated high school in was 1500 people. 1,500 yeah. people like mm-hmm. um, and very close to people always ask me about Letterkenny because they've heard my stories about where I grew up and it's on the border of Quebec yeah. and I was like Letterkenny is actually what we called the city those oh, 5,000 yeah. people <laughs> that's where I had to drive to a half an hour away to get groceries yeah but so yeah. There, there's a and there's in, in winter up there I grew up in a log cabin that my mom and dad built so and wow. getting getting snowed in it's a genuine uh-huh. thing and if you weren't yeah. snowed in your neighbor was and you had to go help dig him out yeah that, yeah that was your whole day like mm-hmm. I, people was like you know how many snow days would you get off from school it's like oh, as many as we need yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as many as happened sort of thing yeah yeah, there wasn't a day yeah. off. That's but you know, Ka- Ka- snow day isn't actually a day off when it's a legitimate. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a fight for survival. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like y'all, because Kath, is, you were you were like you were in New Hampshire, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like I upstate mm-hmm. New York, New Hampshire. Yeah. I mean, I, I just regionally distinct. Nor- the Northeast in yeah. general, yeah, yeah, yeah. can yeah. can all get blanketed. We were just talking about this the other day, Pat and I. So I want to give a PSA to our listeners. Shoveling snow is really cardiovascularly yep. dangerous. People die so, every yeah. year. <laughs> it's. Really, even if you feel like you're in mm-hmm. good shape, if you have to shovel, 
go slow and don't try not to raise the shovel over your heart. Yeah. It's yeah. like people die from it all the time. Yeah, dude. That's I, my, it's, that's my yeah, it's ridiculous that we laugh about it, but I'm like, dude, I could you literally like open up the paper and like, well, who died shoveling their yeah. fucking pipe for you today? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, I, I, I've been shoveling a lot at work cause, uh, and uh, it's that's what that's why Kath gave me that. That's yeah. why I, told yeah. Kath. I was like, don't lift the <laughs> yeah. shovel up, Kath. Yeah. But no, so anyway, the, the point of all that being is is isolation and time by myself. And yeah. I was a, I was a, a very a uh, young reader and a nerd from day one, and so I and I just gravitated towards sort of weirder subjects. And um, you know, Karate Kid was a big thing when I was uh, at about that age. So I was born in '72 and went through a martial arts thing. And this was when the martial arts still had a lot of bullshit surrounding it. Like, oh yeah, this was, yeah. This was, this was the, the, the heyday for the guys. That, well, I have a technique that it could kill you from 15 paces, but I won't yeah. use it. I sure remember thing. like yeah. when you'd hear those things as like a 13 year old right. kid, you just repeat them and be like, "Yeah, dude, like my yep. <laughs> yeah, my friend's <laughs> uncle like studies that stuff. He could do like yeah. a cartwheel and kick you with his left side mm-hmm. of his leg. It's just like yeah, that, that. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm. That was big when I was yeah. growing up, for sure. I thought I thought that was like a very common way that people died was someone just like poked them with yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> accidental dim mock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so uh, yeah, I wanted to you know I wanted to know how to kill people with a five finger. But I wanted to know how to be able to balance on swords. I, I'm literally one of the people that I'm the reason you get those warnings on TV. Uh, well, <laughs> when I was a kid and now as an adult too, because I'm the one doing it on TV. But yeah, as a kid, yeah. that warning that warning was there to tell me, hey, dumbass, don't try and do this yeah but because i was a, a nerd and i had a lot of spare time and both my parents were teachers i had access to the school library i would just go research the hell out of anything i saw that interested me so fire manipulation became a big one and also we heated our house through the wood so i always had a fire to play with our furnace yeah yeah for seven <laughs> I, the, it ama- no it really amazed me when i ended up in what was to me at the time a city albany New York, <laughs> yeah, the because, bustling metropolis right. of all the. Yeah. But I was there. At, I, was, I was in grad school at the university there, and there's a lot of students come up from New York City and go there because Albany State. Yeah. And so many of these people had never really experienced fire in any way other than a campfire, and were so deadly scared of it. Yeah. When I could pull out a torch and mm-hmm. run it up and down my body and stick it in my, mouth, like I was blowing uh, yeah. their mind. I, I literally had girls fainting, and this is <laughs> this is ninety five, ninety six. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, and I'm like, the, I'm like. And in my mind, I had one of those sort of like, not really conservative, but sort of like, I guess more like rural and uh, urban sort of thing, where in my head, I was such a hair. I was like, these freaking people are so divorced from reality, they don't understand fire anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's very true. I did a show at Spite. Yeah, I want to, before we go any further, I want to like talk a little bit about what Eric does in case our listeners mm. don't know. Well, first of all, if you're not watching the video, he is green. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You guys are going to want to watch the video. <laughs> it's it's yeah, a sight gag. Uh, it really he's, is. Yeah, he's like a lizard. You've probably seen him on Ripley's Believe It or Not or something if you're around our age. He's green. But, Eric, you also do you do fire eating, sword swallowing. Yep. I've seen you put, like, forks in yep. your nose. You do suspension <laughs> yep. stuff, right? What, what am I missing? Uh, um, well, there's a lot of things. Like, I when I try and do the list, I miss stuff, too. Uh, because when I, when I set out, and I actually don't advise this as a goal, but it was something that worked for me and it ended up being a gimmick, was I wanted to be the first one-man 10-in-1. So the classic sideshow format is 10 acts in one. You buy one ticket, you go inside, you sit down, you see the show, but you get 10 different acts. So I wanted to be 10 acts Mm. unto myself. So, you know, the first one, I'm a tattooed man. I'm a modified Marvel. I've modified my body in different ways. Uh, And then, you know, I've done, I don't really do this one much anymore, but human pincushion, threading needles through different parts of my body. Is there a reason to just get bored of it, or does uh, does that have a shelf life? uh, I think it kind of has a shelf life for some people. I think for me, um, there were a couple of things that were at play is that number one there's only a certain type of crowd that really wants to see you shove a skewer through your body <laughs> yeah. right? and there's a significant portion of that crowd that doesn't have your best interests at heart like yeah. they just want to see mm. someone do mm-hmm. something horrible to the these are the guys scream at every wrestling match screaming for a cut job every single oh, match yeah, you know, all yeah. they all right. they want yeah, is yep, the red yep. mask yeah Sadist. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. You know, so it's it's a little bit that. And it was also for me, it was like I did it so intensely. And that's what um, a lot of people don't realize about doing sideshow acts and I- including some sideshow performers, because uh, modern age, a lot of people get into the groove of, oh, I go and I do a show a night. Yeah. Right? 
well there's the grind mm-hmm. show is the tradition where it is actually my favorite way to work but you can't there are some acts you can't do in a grind show do them 20 24 times in a day yeah back to back to back right and you yeah. know or you know back in you know sort of the golden age there are these stories of these guys you know the cycling acts so they'd be like oh well, i'll be the fire breather this season yeah and then i'll take a season or two seasons off because you're putting so much poison in your body yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's yeah. like it's like a micro dose but it builds up over time yeah <laughs> dude i i did sure. a show at spider house last night and i got off stage and uh this nice lady was talking to me about uh uh, just you know stuff, and she was like, "Oh, I do fire dancing," yep. and she would show me her little fire dancing videos on on Instagram. And I want to sound real cool to her, so I mentioned that I would be interviewing you tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then uh, and then her boyfriend came outside, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, oh all okay. right." And then, I, and then I went, I, then I went and got Arlo's. Right. So, uh, but yeah, so so we have, we have ten X and one. We have right. So yeah, um, so yeah, the demon pincushion, and so you think about fire. So. Fire was my first real stage act for a, like a, a sideshow act that I ever did, and and mm. just naturally, like I said, playing with fire and getting into it. But I hardly ever do it anymore because it's kind of a liability, and you don't get the best situations yeah. for it. Also, uh, you know, in ninety six, ninety seven, I could legitimately claim to be one of the technically best in the world at that time because that's all I did, right? I was yeah. like, just go in my backyard and play with fire and play with fire, and. As it became less and less of a money driver for me, it became more of a liability than a profit. Yeah. I started to, okay, mm-hmm. well, shit, I've, i got to write my shows and structure my shows without it. Just yeah. let it go. And, but if somebody requests it, I'll do it. In fact, I think the last time I actually did a legit fire performance was in 2015 in Malaysia because the, the show that I was doing specifically requested it. It's on YouTube somewhere. Word, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah so <laughs> it's a, it's actually a, it was actually a great show. This uh, Basically, the David Copperfield of Malaysia decided he was going to stop doing live TV events. So his retirement show, he did a competition. It was him and a street fakir turned uh, TV fakir over there now named Limbad versus an Australian and an American. So it was me and my buddy Space Cowboy from Australia. So we had to go there and do that. What's a, a fakir? Uh, a fakir is basically somebody who does sideshow acts, but more traditionally. It's, it's the tradition it comes from. It's a... Uh, um, India, Pakistan, like that sort of reason, street performance. So people walking on glass, yeah. hot coals. You'll see them in the streets. You know, uh-huh. the same people are doing things. They like, reference that in Aladdin, Prince Ali. Yeah, they, they pronounce it fakers. Yeah. It's forty well, fakers. It's, it's, it's a very, <laughs> it, it's a very well. Depending on how you want to play with it, it's either unfortunate or fortunate that the word fakir is so close to faker, and what they do, people yeah. think is it's just a odd Random you know, chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, language yeah. language happened well, that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing too that like uh I uh think we should s- s- sort of establish right away is like we're talking about conning people and stuff but like yeah. the things you're doing the stunts you're doing are Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's, yeah. Like but there there is a stuff. there's it's a relationship like, to that. If you get into like so if we're talking about like scams and gaffes and cons in sideshow, there are people who have faked mm-hmm. acts, right? And there's for many in fact mm-hmm. uh, a for a very short time, I tried to sell this act, uh, the show that I had written up that was magic versus sideshow, where I would do the magic trick mm-hmm. version. Like there's a fake needle through arm that yeah. Harry Anderson invented that's great, right? It's a lot of fun, and you don't actually have to stick a skewer through your body. Yeah, and always then, a plus. Right? And any, any, uh, you know, so I would show them that, and, I'd be, and now this is what it looks like for real. Yo. And that was basically, that was the whole show. Yeah. It's like, this is what a fake sword looks like going down your throat, because yeah. it's not going down. <laughs> this is what it looks like for real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That that show was not popular. It did not go anywhere. Oh, <laughs> was, what? Well, I mean, it was. It, I think it was a little too inside base. Like magicians yeah. and sideshow people loved it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah, because yeah. we're all yeah, we're all yeah. actually friends, and we we get the little references. And the regular audience was just like, "Why does he keep doing everything twice? Uh, Why is it yeah, grosser yeah. the second time?" Right. <laughs> Our podcast listeners would like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got the audience for you, man. For sure. But. Uh, but anyway, I keep. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're just trying to list stuff. Like I said, cushion. like I was, I kept going through the um, bed of nails, straight jacket escapes. We mentioned uh, flesh hook suspensions, walking on broken glass, mm-hmm. walking on burning coals, uh, can, uh, wait, eating is there, glass. Is there a secret to walking bugs. on breaking glass other than just be careful? Well, here's a, again, like I just said, there's a there's a way you can fake it, and there's yeah. a way you can do it for real. Now, uh, sometimes people will, some people get real nitpicky about where that line is drawn. And I feel like, look, there's adjusting the probability of you getting hurt. 
and no chance mm. whatsoever. So I figure if you're in the if there's yeah. no chance of you getting hurt whatsoever, then you're probably cheating or you're using a fake version. Yeah. If you're like so here walking on broken glass. Here's the thing: you can just walk on broken, and it comes down to technique and luck. Like I've yeah. I've done it, and through no fault of my own or the universe, anyways, I've ended up cut. And yeah. then other times, you know, and most times not cut at all. But if you really want to just play with broken glass and have almost no fear because it's it's not a hundred percent chance but like a ninety nine percent chance um we used to take and you put you break all the glass up right you put it in big canvas duffel bags like sort of army bags you throw that in a dryer or a washing machine and you basically make a giant tumbler and you tumble yeah. the shit out of it yeah. so, so uh we used to have in a show i was doing in australia at this theme park we had a kiddie pool full of broken glass and we would throw a girl into it she'd belly flop <laughs> into like that, and people would lose their mind and like, bits of glass are flying because people will see that the reason be like, careful it's careful it's glass it's yeah, glass and, yeah, be like, yeah. and they'll just give it a tap and they'll be like, oh my god it's real yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's also smooth like it's a marble man. yeah it's yeah like, but yeah no, it's <laughs> all the optics at that point oh yeah it's and so there are there are things like that and again like you get somebody doing a ladder of swords let's say now you can cut uh, Penn and teller had a great bit on this about how you fake knives on stage where they were cutting up a banana with one and he goes look on stage you can cut a banana with a banana and he proceeds to chop the banana with the <laughs> banana like, because it's it's a pre chop thing it's a it's, a, oh, it's, it's there's yeah, an easy yeah. gimmick so it's like yeah if you want to make something appear sharp but not actually let people investigate it doesn't take any trouble at all i <laughs> never thought when somebody goes hey see this knife right here this is sharp and they start chopping stuff yep. never once occurred to me the vegetable was pre-chopped <laughs> right. this, well, it's, this whole time <laughs> I, I was i've just been like well yeah. shit that's it also sharp. just doesn't have to be like if you look at like i say like ladder of swords and machete beds are notorious for this the person always has a cucumber right now yeah. that thing has been sitting in a cooler it is crisp it is ready like any of course and what they're doing is it's just, you know, it doesn't have to be that sharp. They are swinging for the fences. If you look at their arm, they're, they're not just like, because yeah. if it was really sharp, it wouldn't take much you effort. It, yeah, right? yeah, but yeah. they're coming down and you look at it half the time it breaks. Because <laughs> a lot of people and I, you know, I'm not going to call anybody out because it's just it is what it is. We're here for know. the smoke on this. Yeah. Podcast. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, there a lot of people use, you know, blades that are basically stairs you know, yeah they're not, yeah they're not they're not sharp at all and that's it comes down to an individual performer's sort of you know how crazy i also know people that take you know huge unnecessary risks where i look at them and be like dude there's doing right. the stunt and then there's just seeing if you can get hurt for fun you know yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah there's the, that's interesting that makes a lot of sense that there's sort of a spectrum and it's like yeah uh there's a difference between like completely faking it versus well, uh Making sure you're not a hundred percent certainly going to die. Well, um, I don't. I, I wish I could remember who it was. I can, can kind of narrow it down to a couple of people in my head, but I don't know exactly who told me this. And it was early on for me. It was like yeah, like mid to late nineties. And I'm talking about stunts and acts. And this is the point where I'm just starting to build up my own versions and you know see how find out how far I can go. Like the first time I put a, a skewer through my cheek. It probably took me 15, 20 minutes, like staring in my own yeah. bathroom. Oh. And then I got more and more comfortable with it till I could do it on stage. Right. So you got to you got to build up to a lot of the more extreme acts. And uh, the, the person yeah. it may, it might have been Todd Robbins, but whoever it was, they told me they go, look, you can't compete with crazy. <laughs> like at the at the at the end of the day, you are uh, a wannabe artist entertainer trying to make a living who has limits and ideas yeah. about responsibilities. Uh, you are never going to win a competition with an actual lunatic. And there are way too many of them out there yeah, yeah. to discount that situation. <laughs> That's another reason why, like I said, like, why don't I do certain acts? I'm like, well, because look, if people want like, what I did it when I when I sewed a button to my arm in 95 that was extreme that was horrifying that was you know people yeah. running from the room and now it <laughs> wouldn't barely get it you would, booked yeah, you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like i and i'm not gonna escalate the yeah. way that some people I've, are escalating yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so done in yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh in your I, so we, one thing I want to get out of the way. So yeah. we talked a little bit about the distinction between circus and carnival, right? And uh, you you summed it up in a way that I liked. Uh, it was uh, one's trashy, one's classy. What's yeah? 
Where, where, so, <laughs> where, oh, wait, what, 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 what are like the kind of uh, the, the politics behind that? Uh, I think that it just it comes down to a, a couple of different factors, and not the least of which is sort of circus attitude. Because yeah. <laughs> like, well, circus and circuses are much more of a, a built up in sort a of family legacy like, and a long term. Because if you think about what's involved in a circus, right? Yeah. And it they, it clings to and remember, circus started in Europe, and that's why you have the rings, the equestrian rings. You'd have horses who were the main act. Correct. And the way that Americans circus mm-hmm. kind of differentiates from that is going to one big ring and having more animal and, yeah. and variety acts like that but the the history and the attitude that is there is one of this is you know not necessarily aristocratic but it's it's a higher social occasion that's what's yeah. going on there and it's it's about the show and you're going to see performers you're going to see world class performers carnival is kind of a budget hey you couldn't go to the circus or you know we're gonna we need to do something to break up the time here but it's more about you know the food and like I said nowadays yeah. the rides but historically, the shows that were there were more catering to, and this is the other way that people sometimes look at it, is that uh, circus is a is sees itself and is seen as a, nor- a noble pursuit. Like the church can go to the circus, yeah. Right, the church yeah, goes. Yeah. The carnival mm. caters to your the. the yeah, you're being a priest the, that hangs out yeah, at a carnival. Fucking yeah. run, dude. The, <laughs> the, 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 cir- <laughs> the, the circus. The circus caters to your higher aspirations. The carnival yeah. caters to your base needs. Okay, right? the okay. Car- the carnival's mm. where you're going to get gambling. You're going to get sex. You're going to yeah. get thrills. You're going to get you know, they like, say the the rises like that. It's and that's that again that sort of aspect that people have about and it's just i think it's a pop culture thing that grew out of it and it's the distinctions are kind of weird anyway because if you look back there as a practical matter again you when you start thinking about this you're like that wouldn't really make sense because people had to move between these worlds and do yeah. it. now sure there were cases of and yeah. this was in, in the right time you know 40 50 well no, she didn't know more like 70 years ago now that would be a good way if you needed to get out of town quick but yeah that's the other thing with the romanticized bit people like oh i'd love to join the circuit oh do you like shoveling shit because that's what oh, yeah, that's what people yeah, yeah. when people ran away and joined the circus and it did happen right you didn't just get to be a clown you didn't just get to go on the highway or they didn't <laughs> train those are families of generations they don't yeah, let outsiders in yeah, yeah. that's the other thing that the, the circus is very much a closed just gets in now the the carnival is more like you know thieves against the town but where it is more of a hey uh, I don't trust you but I don't trust them more yeah, so or we're yeah. in this together we're on the same lot. The type of thing. So uh, I, I, we, my mom, the neighborhood I grew up in, uh, uh, the Rabbit Fest came to Copper's Cove. It ran by Crabtree Amusements, mm-hmm. and uh, my mom's neighbor ran off with them and just came and was like, "Debbie, yep. can you watch watch my plants while I'm gone?" But one thing that you would put me onto, and I don't know if this would be more at place. I would say this would be. Uh, now we just drew the distinction. I want to get into something like the scams, a little yeah, bit of yeah. the games. Yeah. And something you put me on that I went to learn about that I was, I, I thought this was great, uh, was a jam auction. <laughs> Jam auction. So yep. you'd find a jam auction probably at a carnival. Yeah, yeah. Jam okay. auction. Jam, see, and that's the other thing because the circus is, uh, you know, sort of, you know, proper business, and the circus owners were big businessmen. You got to remember, the circus was in deep with the railroads because that's how they traveled, and that circus had a oh, huge amount yeah. of influence. When a circus came to your town, businesses shut down, schools let out. Yeah. It was such. It was the local economy booster. Yeah, it was yeah, especially yeah. before mm-hmm. TV. It was everything when the circus came to town the carnival was something that was more a little more slapped together uh depending on the operation it, again there's such a wide spectrum of this it's hard to actually come up with a decent stereotype because everything's going to fall apart when you look at the look at the details of it but yeah you've got you know the circus it comes in the circus you know brings all this stuff to town it's it's a bump up it's a booster people from all over come yeah. to your town to be there for it so yeah, so this is this is what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, but the jam auction, yeah, is definitely it's more of a carnival. More of a thing. carnival thing. See, and, yeah, it has carnival vibes. Uh, and it's, I, I've seen it done as street performance. Yeah, literally, uh, where people are doing. I can see that somebody roll rolling up on a pitch and opening up a case. Yeah, and just boom, going for it. So here, here's what a jam auction is. A jam auction uh, are. Uh, we, we, a long time listener to our our Soapy Smith episode where he was doing uh, it, was, it was doing like out, out the thing like where he's selling bars of soap yep. in a big bowl and you can pull out you heard of that Soapy Smith yep. so the this, so for the people at home a jam auction is a stage auction that one would normally find at a circus or carnival uh, it offers insane deals on supposedly pricey items also listeners would know the scam about the 
uh, high end speaker systems that you get for twenty bucks. Try to sell at a pawn shop, it turns out they're worthless, or yep. actually several hundred. So these jam auctions will have things like a grooming kit that looks mm-hmm. really good. It has like a, a comb, a brush. It'll also have like a, a wristwatch yep. or uh, a handbag or something. Things that look really nice, mm-hmm. but are actually only like two or three bucks yeah. a piece, if that. Or straight up knockoffs. Too. Or straight, yeah, <laughs> just straight up knockoffs. Yeah. yeah. So basically, the one that I saw, I watched a video of one happen. It okay, was pretty yeah. There's a couple of good ones on on YouTube. Yeah, yeah this is what this one was. Uh, two so two auctioneers, they pull up and they stand in the back. These guys were in a box truck. Yep. And they pull out behind them in the truck are high end electronics or other valuable goods. That's where you see like your PSPs, your Blu-rays, yep. your big screen TVs. These are all behind them. At least at least the boxes are. It's called the Flash. That's the Flash. That's okay. The flash. Okay. <laughs> yep. So that's the Flash. That, yeah. Like, flash. And when you see a carnival game, the big uh, the big dolls, and that's that that's the Flash. Yeah, the ones you'll it, never get. Yeah, the ones that nobody yeah. wins because <laughs> because they're not even. It's not that they're not even winnable. It's like yeah, they're not even on the scale. You you could get absolutely perfect. But oh, you got all three. You could choose from the third shelf. What's yeah, on the fourth? Never, What's on the fifth? Oh, that's right. the Flash. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's just there to drag you over. Yeah, and that's so yeah. You're walking by mm-hmm. box truck, big screen TV. Hey, I'll go see what these guys. Yeah, yeah. bunch yeah. of people outside milling around. Yeah. So yeah. So they begin to auction cheaper items like grooming kits for a dollar, uh, all while saying they retail for more. These sell for five. If yep. it's five dollars, these sell for fifteen. The first purchase is small. It's storage but it, wars. It's storage wars. Yeah, it's very storage <laughs> it's wars. A, yeah, it's literally the same. It's the same shit that the guys at storage wars say. They're like, "Oh, I get twenty bucks for this all day. I get thirty bucks for this all day. Yeah. You won't get two dollars for that." Yeah, no, not at all. And so the uh, the first purchase is small, but it comes with an oversized bag. Yep. And now you have a bag in your hand, and what do you put in the bag? You put in more more stuff. Yep. So a plant. Usually, usually there's a plant in the crowd. Yeah. And a plant in the crowd buys one. A the lot of plants. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. It feels like that's a, a yeah. whole other. Well, if you want to talk about like scams, especially for circus and and carnival, kind of like shills, scam, yeah. yeah, shills, plants, whatever you want to call them, they are massive, and it's in every stage of the game. It can be getting tickets sold for a crowd to get moving. You, I mean, I've used it. It's it's not usually the straight up like, hey, I'm paying you to be in the crowd. It's normally like at a festival when I've got a crowd and things are a little bit slow and somebody I recognize that's seen the show before comes by or like wants to yeah. be a friend of the show. Be like, hey, man, you coming to see the show again? And if they're wishy-washy better, like, look, I'll let you in for free, but here's the deal. I need you, you know, when you hear me say this, that's when I want you to start walking towards uh. there. He's like, stand back with the rest of the people and watch the outside ballet that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But when I give you a cue, head over there and do it. And actually, you know, I've you know, doing this one festival for nine years where it got to the point where families would come up and we'd be out there talking be like when's the next show and they're like okay we'll come back let us know when to when to go yeah it's, dude, the, the line matters like we would even get like our friends whenever to stand next yeah. to the box office but in a line because yeah it's tr- i used to i said this in london for years i was like trust the queue trust yeah. the queue trust because the queue. my, my yeah. partner would be like oh maybe we should hold off the show see if we sell some more tickets i'm like when the queue goes in that's when the ticket sales begin yeah because people yeah. see them going in they go mm-hmm. no and that's when i kick in again no line no wait don't hesitate come over here right now and get your ticket the show's going inside yeah, once those yeah. curtains close no more will be admitted make sure you're on the inside and so you don't miss our bona fide survival yeah, I, haven't, uh, I, I haven't had to do that, that in a while then. It. So cool. i'm trying I'm try to get, get into my yeah. <laughs> for it. I am so, out of practice. <laughs> so a plant, yeah, a plant in the crowd will buy an auction, will buy yeah. an item to get it going. The auctioneer thanks the purchaser by giving the item and then returns the money is a big thing of it. They go, yeah. hey, and they and what they'll usually that'll cause more people to purchase. Yep. And then they do they, they they train them almost like a dog. They'll have a phrase where they'll ask, hey, who's happy? And yep. everybody says, I'm happy. And they say, I'm happy, and they get the money back. Yep. And it's like, hey, you're happy? I tell you what, now you're even happier. There's your dollar right there. There's your $5. Yep. So this causes more people to purchase. Purchases then escalate to more expensive items, but each round sees the money return and the crowd says they're happy, and everybody's waiting for them to get to the flash. Yeah. That's where they're going to start selling the PSPs. That's where they're going to start selling the... I say PSPs because that's what the, <laughs> that was on the video I watched. Right. That's an old piece of electronics. Yeah. I understand that. But... uh Purchase it, uh, yeah. So then, by three or four items in, the crowd has continued purchasing, getting their money back when they say they're happy, all while hoping that the laptops, iPads, and phones will be next. Finally, the auctioneers present a slightly more expensive item, like a watch. It looks nice, but it's actually cheap. Uh, they'll pitch that for mm-hmm. twenty bucks, which is basically every watch, though, because watch, uh, yeah, yeah. watches <laughs> are a scam in general. Right? Like just so everybody knows, the watch industry is a fucking yeah. scam. hundred <laughs> percent. So the, the 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 crowd who so they'll pitch that for like twenty bucks. The crowd who's now initiated in the rhythm of the auction will buy it for twenty, and then the auctioneers will ask if they're happy, and the crowd will say yes, anticipating a refund, and the crowd will go, well, if you're happy, I work. 
work here is done. And they pull down the gate of the truck and they drive and off. Fly <laughs> out, yeah. <laughs> and, then there's a, and there's a few, like, that's a good, basically, so you, the, when you watch, the, there's basic versions of it, but there's, it's been spun off. Like I say, this is one of these ideas where it's been co-opted into the fabric of, you know, kind of anything you do. Um, I don't know the guy's name, but I know this story about the Tropicana, which coincidentally is going to cease to exist or about to oh, cease to really? exist. Yeah, it's, it's been done operations for a while. I think they're scheduled for yeah. the demolition. That's but, like 9-11 for degenerates. For, <laughs> for me, that was one. That was the first place I ever stayed in, in uh, Vegas the first time I went in the 90s. And so they had this little area, right, where if you'd been playing, you get certain amount of uh, tickets to use the machines in there. And, and that machine, every machine is a winner, right? Yeah, because yeah. You're, you're going to get some little mm. thing, some little gift. And but the, So the upsell, so these mugs that say Tropicana on them, we're like the low end sort of thing. And I sort of watched the person. And there's a dude in there, right? And I'm watching him for a little while. I'm like, he's doing a jam auction. What is it? It, it's like, yeah, keep playing. You can buy more tickets for these machines. I mean, you use up the ones that you've earned yeah. in order to get a better chance mm. at the next one. Right but don't worry. Everybody's at least getting the Tropicana, the four yeah, Tropicana yeah. beer mugs. Yeah. And I'm like, and I look at those beer mugs. And, and in my head, this is when I just started like printing merch and whatever because that was something yeah. I wanted to have. I'm like, I'm selling t-shirts now. I bet like, beer mug would be great. I yeah. like, Lizard Man beer mug would be fantastic. And I'm going, yeah, they're the Tropicana. They probably print 10 to 20,000 of those every couple of months. Yeah. Like, just trying to work out the price points for things I do. Yeah. I was like, a twenty four ninety five value, no fucking way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and that's ultimately like we talked about a little bit before, um, and before the on the show was that the real scam here is that the games can't lose, right? Because even if you yeah. win, it's not like you paid three dollars to win a stuffed toy that cost them twenty five cents. Yeah, because they buy in bulk, right. yeah. and this goes all the way back. This has always been the whole thing, and it's always been like I say that reason of. Why would we cheat you when we're going to get your money anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did want to get into some of the games uh, because, man, this, this was cool. I, 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 I've really enjoyed this. We are a lot farther along than I thought. Uh, but so I want to ask about – so we have a few of the, the regular ones. And I yeah. want to share a story. I, I have been scammed at a carnival. Okay. Have when I was 15. <laughs> Kath, have you ever been scammed at a carnival? I haven't been scammed, but I did um... – I have this memory of I went to Disney as a kid with my family. That's the, that's the big boys. And we were that. playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were, God, talk about ripping people yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and willingly wanting to be yeah. ripped yep. off. Uh, yes. But uh, so we, I went to Disney as a kid and we were um, we, we were playing some carnival game. It was like the you toss the rubber things on the bottle. Yeah. Like a ring toss. Yeah. 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 Like a ring toss thing. And um my brother ended up winning and he won this it, it it's like the type of thing that would be flash mm -hmm. like it was this huge stuffed snake it was yep. huge it was probably <laughs> 10 feet long and like maybe a foot around like a foot in diameter and my parents were so fucking mad because they had to figure out how to bring it home <laughs> you know who's on a train I... And like they, my brother was like four years old. They <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, have you seen the uh, the yeah. Wheelie Mammoth episode of Bob's Burgers? If anybody's seen that that episode, there, there's an episode of Bob's Burgers where they basically uh, Mr. Fish Odor turns the kids into his little army of counter. Carney game thing. He teaches them how to beat all the crooked games, uh. so that they so that because he's got in a feud with his partners and there's a little sub story. But anyway, that the actual stuff in there about the game about how the games are rigged and how to win them and the whole point of the wheelie mammoth, which was the giant flashy oh, toy that was it. Nobody man. nobody yeah. could win like that. And it's yeah, it's they they break it down all really really well. It's probably the best sort of easily accessible quick explanation of it. Huh. But the other thing about that is that that's again, and I think it, we mentioned this a little bit before is the, the, how the games can be rigged yeah. is a, is a, is a mm -hmm. business in itself. What yeah. happened? And it's usually kind of, usually what, you know, if you look at these books, right, it's like former carnival games, you know, master or former yeah. carnival, tells all the secrets exposed like that. That's just his gimmick to sell books. That's yeah, all, like, yeah, what, yeah. What, so yeah. he's scamming on yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the yeah. Third order scamming. Yeah, the, 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 scam, the, the scam is, I'm going to scam you into thinking you're learning a secret scam. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's, man, I, I got done on the, uh, uh, the, the, throw the ball in the bucket, right? Yep. 
Um, mm. Man, I can't say it now without putting the backspin on it because now that I'm older, I realize the guy's doing the little backspin yeah. on it. But I'm walking by. It's me and my friends. We're like 15. <laughs> we have our skateboards with us. Uh, easily the coolest kids in the county. And we're walking by. <laughs> and we're walking by this fucking this booth at the at the Rabbit Fest in Copper's Cove, Texas, put on by Crabtree Amusements. And we're going by, and this dude who like looked kind of cool. He looked like he could have been a skater or whatever. He is. He goes, "Hey boys, we got some skateboarders tonight. You got to come in." He goes, yep. "I got." In my, in my trailer right now, I got this. We're not putting them out yet. We're going out later. It's it's a brand new Tony Hawk deck, mm-hmm. which if you skateboard, doesn't really make any sense. He would yeah. say a birdhouse deck or whatever. He would say a brand new <laughs> yeah. Tony Hawk deck. But my stepmom had just given me thirty dollars, <laughs> and I had Uh-oh. thirty bucks on me. And oh, he picked, he found it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was just a big too. pigeon. Pigeon, by Mark, <laughs> Rube, Yokel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, did, did you have, did you notice a big white chalk mark on your shoulder? Oh afterwards? no! Do they do they really do that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's why it's one of the one of the the legends behind calling people marks is if oh, you get I l- tried to look this if, shit up. <laughs> if you uh, if you if you, you you do your do your fellow con artists a, a solid for it, you like when somebody when you've taken enough out of the guy, you don't take him completely broke because then he's gonna get mad anyway. You always yeah. want to leave him a little bit. Right? But as you, you pat him, you put a little chalk in your hand, you pat him on the shoulder, and then if somebody else walks through the crowd sees a little chalk on the back of somebody's shoulder. He goes, oh, this guy, uh, this guy might be my uh, next one. This guy's <laughs> stupid. All right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, this guy. <laughs> yeah, he got in there and he showed me. He threw it in. It landed right in the bucket. Landed yep. right in the bucket. I go a little underhand toss, and, yep. and he keeps getting me to double down. And eventually, <laughs> I lose all thirty. Yep. I lose all thirty dollars. Yep. <laughs> and I'm walking away, and like my friend was like, "That was so stupid, man! You just lost thirty dollars." And I tried. I was like, "I don't care." My yep. stepmom gave it to me, <laughs> like, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, but you don't have thirty dollars anymore." Yeah. And I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I, yeah, that is a part of this, but still, I don't care." <laughs> yeah, I really was, twisting the knife for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like you yeah, could have had this is thirty dollars in like two thousand and one money. <laughs> yeah. Like this was. Well, it's, uh, the other thing, like you said about him doing the little flick and it going right in the whole thing, like, you got to remember that these guys, and well, they're usually kids, right? Like the last time I did a uh, Six Flags, uh, it was up in New Jersey, and I actually stayed in the cabins underneath the roller coaster for the Halloween season. But the rest of those cabins. <laughs> it's it's going to be the worst fucking room in the house. Right? Well, <laughs> it's, well, I mean, they, they shut it down at night, right? So like, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, again, I'm a, I'm a there mark. There was I'm uh, famously like an apartment under the Coney Island cyclone for right. a while. Yeah. <laughs> <that's> a legend. <laughs> I think the guy who like ran it lived in it yeah. or something. Probably. Probably. <laughs> That's right. Thing. But anyway, so anyway. The, the rest of the uh, the cabs, the reason they were there was they were for uh, seasonal staff, and they would fly kids up. A lot of them were from the Caribbean, a lot of Jamaicans, yeah. a lot of uh, Dominican. Um, to I'm just trying to think, but, well, that doesn't matter. But so they've got them running the games yeah. in in the park. Now they're there. Like I had to go in, like go to my stage, like two hours before the opening, which is fine. I go in and get set up and relax like that. They're out there at the games already. The gates aren't even open. So what are they doing? Yeah. They're playing the games. You are up against somebody who can make an impossible shot. The, yeah, these dudes yeah. on YouTube yeah. that are doing, you know, yeah, that, yeah. Like the, they're doing that for six. Well, not six. They're doing that for a couple of hours before their shift and afterwards and during the, like I said, they're, yeah. they're, Telling the kids like, look, no, it's easy. I'll do it. Look, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll yeah, do it yeah. backwards. I'll do yeah. it sideways. Like, and then that starts kicking you in the pride. That's the other thing is that, and this is something I've really always loved about it from the and, like drew me to it too was the psychology of it, and sort yeah. of the, the the to me the highest level of that is the dunk tank clown. Which yeah. you don't think about. This isn't a scam, mm. right? It's like, no, no. You give them money. They give you balls. If you hit the, the target, the guy goes in the water. There's no soft target. You don't yeah. hit it. He doesn't fall. There's none of that. But what's really going on here is, and the, the best of them, when you see them, it's just amazing, is they're calling people out. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, getting people, yeah. they're getting people so angry. They're getting them worked up. They're getting more and more. They're like, come on, put me in the water again, big guy. What, can, yeah, what do you got? Can yeah, you do it again? Yeah. Bet you can't do it again. Right. That was a flu. You know, uh, and you know, some of them just... You know, they just look at people and just immediately know what will needle them. And yeah. the 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 classic uh, story, well, it's uh, the jackpot. It's, this is uh, the circus car when you're telling stories about something that happened, it's cutting up a jackpot. Yeah. So the classic jackpot about the dunk tank clown is, 
and again, I'm, I'm horrible with the name. So whoever he was, well known in the business back in the 50s, 60s, he's in some little town and he gets this guy who comes up and the guy puts him in the water and he just starts needling him and he starts talking about his girlfriend. And the guy keeps more, 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 and he gets you dumping him in the water and dumping him in the water. Uh, and then part of the story is that it's late in the season, so it's starting to get cold. Yeah. And he starts climbing up and he just, you know, he gives up. He's like, okay, you know, screw it. I'm sorry. I, sorry I said that about your, your wife, I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the dude just keeps putting down money and keeps dunking him over and over. <laughs> over and over again. and you know so it's, it ends up the the guy gets pneumonia and it, well and the dude that, who's throwing comes back to the tank and he says where's the other clown and he's like no sorry man he got pneumonia from you know being dunked in the water so many times like that you're like good you tell him never to, you tell him never to come around here before like that yeah and he goes well who was that guy and he goes he was the pitcher of the local baseball team yeah so so yeah so the story is that they, this great dunk clown gets yeah. pneumonia yeah, and yeah, this guy yeah. but this guy would come back day after day <laughs> yeah, just to dunk him at? I, I guess like the, 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 that there, you got to be like a roast comic. You got to be an insult. That's comic. A, essentially yeah. what it was. Just that people, I mean, and you, you don't, you know, we, we like to again, like we have this idea of, oh yeah, it'd be like being a roast comic. It'd be so wild. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Like, but in that actual situation, it degenerates pretty quickly. To hey, fat so your girlfriend's yeah, yeah, yeah. ugly. <laughs> you know, you throw like a they can't yeah, all be, you, you yeah. throw like a six year old girl. Like yeah. it, it gets real. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> struggling to climb back on the little it's platform very a piece of shit very problematic yeah. Very quickly. <laughs> yeah. uh so this is so like we, we're actually we're getting closer to the end here so i want to ask you about two things okay uh so the, one of them was the uh so this is about games this is from a texas monthly article mm -hmm. and it's about just uh kind of, they kind of hung out with the guys running the games at a yeah. carnival mm -hmm. uh and cool little uh, little lingo here. The mid the midway is that like that's like the yeah. it's it's um it basically all these terms generally describe where you are on the path to the sur so in a, a traditionally a sideshow is a sideshow because it's on the side yeah and the midway is the big road that basically goes all the way down to the big tent the circus tent that's oh, there so this would be okay. in, in a circus in a Got circus it. out now it's this is where it, things get muddy right but a sideshow could also show up on its own at a carnival. And do and then and mm -hmm. work, especially if it was a freak show. And the difference between a freak show and a sideshow just it comes down to: Are you doing acts or and or and the acts not that freaky, like juggling or something, yeah, yeah. balance, hand balancing, contortion, stuff like that? Versus, do you have freaks in there? People who dislocate their shoulders and yeah, swallow yeah, swords yeah, and yeah, yeah. are completely tattooed. You yeah. know, <laughs> people who are unfit for civilized culture. Like yeah, 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 yeah. It, it used right. to be yeah, the, yeah. the difference between yeah, the difference between a sideshow and a freak show was like you'd bring your family to a sideshow, freak show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have you ever? heard of the rat wheel the rat yes okay so you, can so. you explain a, 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 a rat wheel to us so is this the the gambling with the rat wheel yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. so it's usually it's kind of like if i'm remembering this right it's, it's a lot like uh what i saw more of in growing up in carnival stuff which is uh chicken bingo where you've got squares and like chicken yeah, yeah, chicken where, shit bingo, wherever yeah. the chicken shits that's that's your bingo and you call that so with the rat wheel wasn't it that there were different holes and yeah. that, that you bet on the hole that the rat would go to yeah yeah and so yeah. which opens up the possibility of baiting the rat to the hole that you want yeah as the operator. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Man, oh yeah, that that, that was but, uh, see that's one of those things too where you got to quite like I mean chicken chip bingo we all know is a, an actual thing but yeah will, I mean I I don't doubt that it was done but it, the other one is how common are these sort of things because people yeah. will come up with these weird gambling stuff and you're like wait did nobody have a deck of cards what the yeah, fuck yeah. is going on here? <laughs> 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 this seems pretty yeah you're yeah, going yeah. through a lot of work here well they were saying they had to, they had to start <laughs> policing carnivals for gambling because they became right. dids, yeah dids of gambling well again because yeah the carnivals would would you know play on your uh, inequities right like yeah. I said the, the base urges that's where you're going to get like a girly show or like you know in the daytime it's the authentic the authentic native Hawaiian hula yeah. performed in Oklahoma for right. the first time ever yeah. by the blah 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 dancers and then after about 8 or 9 p.m. it's the hula la and ah, the, right yeah. and <laughs> you know, and it, again like it's yeah of course there were some criminals of course there was some prostitution of course you had this going on but you also, like I said before, you're drawing from the local elements too. Everybody's on the inside yeah. and the take. Basically, the you know, and the carnies, the sort of the banding together aspect was of that because it was uh, kind of like a we don't have anyone to watch our back. If the townies get out of line, right. yeah. the cops are going to come show up for them, even if we bribe them. Yeah, which was yeah. often the case. You did. Yeah. Right. This, this is just business as usual in that respect. Where you're a big, you're a big event coming into town. You're going to have to grease some palms. Yeah. Whether you're Taylor Swift at the event center or you're coming in, there's some there's some greasing going on. Yeah, well that's that that 
Right. I mean, like you said, like the people people in in carnivals in particular are like often sort of people who are attracted to sort of being outsiders or whatever. Yeah. But they're going in and they're going into these towns and it's like they're the idea is, oh, they're coming to like rip off the town or whatever. But <laughs> yeah, it's like, but yeah. the town all knows yeah, each other. Yeah, town yeah, could, The town could lynch these yeah. people. The town yeah. could, you know, like the they have their own power structures and it's, authority. It's, it's very so, much. Like, these people need to stick yeah. together and, yeah. and let each other it's, know. It's that. very much like any, like you said, like that, the parallels. It's it's like I don't like, you know, it's, you know there's parallels between me being green and someone not and someone else not being white. But yeah. there's nowhere, it's nowhere on the same oh, level, yeah. right? Same thing with Carter's like, look, yeah, there are, there are parallels parallels to any other persecuted minority for the carnival workers who come into town yeah but it's not on the mm. scale it's not yeah, institutionalized. Yeah, it's not institutionalized yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well that leads me to my like, the last thing i want to ask about and this is something that I, I i had heard about and i wonder if there's any truth to this or if i'm maybe getting a little bit wrong you talk about carnies banding together defending each other yeah. i've heard there's like a catchphrase <laughs> that can be yelled <laughs> yeah and if somebody yells I'm, it it's fucking go time on anyone who's not a carny dude, it's it's hey rube hey rube yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah, if you hear if you hear hey rube Ooh, fucking duck and cover because that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody somebody did something wrong like i've like and it's one of those things where and it that will vary a little bit by where you are um i've spent enough time uh in australia like, but there's you know sometimes it's not even that's, that's what do they say in australia well, like well, w- w- wiggity boo or something <laughs> <but> <laughs> it's uh, it's more like it well in in australia everything is tone right so yeah at, Cunt is everything. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what it is. Like, like that cunt could be your food. It's it's like a John in Philly, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's everything. Yeah. But you know, there's that one tone that's like here in Hey Rube, and you just look for the nearest stick. Or yeah, the classically, yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be the tent stake. Grab a tent, <laughs> grab a tent, grab a tent stake, and start clubbing anybody you don't know. Oh, that's um, so <laughs> tight. I love. That. I mean, I've I've seen not in uh, not in like a festival setting or anything like in the classic carnival setting, yeah. but I've, I've had that happen on tours. Yeah. Where we've basically, really? yeah, we're basically, you know, a bunch of tour guys out or in the middle and just been like, all right, if uh, you don't recognize somebody from the bus you sleep on, punch him in the fucking face. Let's go. <laughs> like, we've had full on, I've been out on tour and had been in bars where, uh, shit, this, this one I'm trying to remember, it was St. Louis. It was St. Louis and we were, uh, I was there to start off the 2004 Fall Jägermeister tour and it was headlined by Slayer. That and, sounds so sick. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was it was Mastodon, uh, Kill Switch Engage, nice. Slayer, Kill Engage. Yeah, and, and we always had a local opener on there. But we got to St. Louis and, and immediately found out that the start date had been pushed back a week. So we were supposed to play on whatever oh. Saturday. So I got there on like a Thursday or Friday for yeah. pre-production and all the meet with the lawyers bullshit and all that. And then like on Saturday itself, they're like, no, it's going to be next Saturday because that's the soonest we could get the venue again and do it. I forget mm-hmm. what there was random production issues, but, but that put a bunch of us at the beginning. And the worst thing, I say this as someone who's, you know, done a fair amount of touring and absolutely loved it. The You never give tour guys more than two or three days off in a row, yeah. much less a week, yeah. and you don't do it at the start of the tour yeah, where there's yeah, literally yeah. nothing to do. There's no like backlog of work hanging over yeah. that anybody's going to use to keep themselves occupied. So we just start roaming around like fucking feral dogs, <laughs> just fucking like all the all the texts for Slayer. And like we went to this bar one night because the owner, and we're not going to correct anybody's mistakes, right? The owner thinks that we are with Corporate Jaeger, like my tour manager, yeah. my poster hangers, me and mm-hmm. my stage assistant, when really we're just you know the independent contractors that get to ride along and play Rockstar, yeah. but with a corporate credit card. Sure. And he's like, yeah, these guys are from Jägermeister. We're going to come in here. They had us judge their wet t-shirt contest, nice. which turned into a booty contest, <laughs> which turned into a bar emptying brawl. Uh, and so, like, I'm literally on stage. People were not happy with the, with the winner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I was like, I don't, I, to this day, I have no idea how any of this shit started. I'm on stage with a couple of, a couple of my bus mates up there, yeah. and we're watching Watching these girls get fucking water poured over their heads and my t-shirt and the tops are coming off and all of a sudden the crowd is fighting and we're like what and the fight is just growing bigger <laughs> yeah, than those yeah. things. and finally we like be like okay girls can go there's a little side room for them we are like yeah. put the whole girls in there and we're <laughs> on the stage and the fight comes to the state and now like for the next i don't know how long we're getting bounced around the whole room just like okay stick together yeah. finally we get you know everybody just starts flying out into the streets 
as we start to get up, the cops are showing up. The crews are showing up. The owner comes out, grabs all of us from behavior, starts throwing us back in the bars. It's because we're like, I've been, I was like, oh, I've been kicked out of a lot of bars. It's the only time I've been kicked into one. <laughs> <laughs> Dude was like, get inside the fucking bar, get inside the fucking bar, pulls us in with a stab, slams the door shut. <laughs> we're just standing there, we're, we're just like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, Rube. Dude, I, you know, I, I think that's what we're, 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 Come towards the end, man. Eric, thank yeah. you so much for coming on, it was a man. Pleasure, I, man. I had like I had yeah. more I had things I was gonna ask about. And no, I just <laughs> just handed it off to you, dude. You took us on a ride there, brother. Well, shit, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much, oh, Eric. This is really thank you, great. man. I it's do, good to see you. And good to before we go, I would like to ask one sure. more thing. Can you just leave us with one more piece of uh, carnival slang? Car- carnival slang. We well, here's the carnival slang. If you want to try and uh, bluff your way through is you're okay. you got to be and with with uh with carnival workers we're with it for it and never against it it is the show is, okay. is the carnival okay. is a lot yeah. right so you're with it. so like if i was bringing you guys with me to go to go visit somebody else's show as we're going in the back it might be yeah this is pat or this is kath they're with it yeah except yeah. except <laughs> nice. except for like except for here's the key is that you don't say with it you can't, can't pronounce it but it's with it with it like w-i-d-i-t yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, so with he, he's, with with he's with it okay. he's with it okay right. so, like so it'd be that. like and, well and Thank the you. call yeah, the, yeah also the call and response would be if somebody challenges you, like you with it with it forward and never against it boom that's sick nice. as hell like we that. should all start talking yeah. more like ca- carnies <laughs> which like, I, I mean it's it's, it's it's and it's the funny thing about it is it's like i i love hearing it brought back it, but the reality is anybody who ever took it seriously is long dead yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. like nobody's actually doing it like look on a modern on a modern carny lot somebody's be like i don't know you yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what you're gonna get <laughs> Damn. Well, th- yeah. Hey, Eric, thank you so much for coming on, man. We had a blast Dude, talking fun. to you. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have anything you want to uh, put out there, or, uh, plug, or throw out? Uh, if you're in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, I will be there on April 13th doing the Saskatoon Tattoo Expo. Nice. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I'm going to be mowing my lawn. I, my wife and I bought a house. Uh, oh, last, nice. Congratulations. Last house. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm learning lawn care at the moment. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my exciting new Stunt coming yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. Care. <laughs> You'll find something to do with that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just trying to think about it. He'll pull it over. Can we grow weed in our backyards in Texas yet? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 we no, can't no. Do that. I would never do that. Yeah, That's yeah. it. Drugs are bad. <laughs> Psychedelic mushrooms can be important around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, hey man, thanks again for coming on. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, make sure if you're in Saskatoon, go out there, get tatted. You'll never match our man, though, uh, guys. If you're listening to the audio of this, go check out the YouTube channel because uh, Eric has put a lot of work into this incredible appearance that he has, and you're gonna want to go take a look and at it. This this is my scam. This is my scam to not have yeah. to ever work a real <laughs> job. Like, like, like yeah. what's the what's the what's the best scam you've ever heard of, Lizard Man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The it's, Lizard Man scam. It's, it's a one off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, uh, yeah, so, uh, Kath, you got anything for us? Yeah, it'll be out for, I don't know when this is going to be out, but it'll be somewhat soon. I think this, I don't think this will be out until early May, unfortunately. Okay. So hopefully you went to see. Oh, so Eric yeah, hopefully. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, actually, yeah. in that in that so. case, uh, June, tw- I'm trying to think what's that for me. In June 20th, I will be in New York City uh, presenting with a lecture series uh, about identity. And it's a lecture that in the fall we're taking to Princeton. Wow! So there you go. That's I like, so cool. I'll, I'll cool. do I'll do my highbrow uh, my yeah, highbrow yeah, upcoming yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Let me know when that is. I'll, call, I'll it's come. It's it uh, it is June twentieth at Nine Orchards, which is the hotel and okay. event center for it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, Very we'll cool. go out there and see that. Uh, Kathy, you got anything coming up? Uh, 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 um. I don't. I don't know what I have in May. Follow me on social media at Kath Barbadoro. I'm kind of off Twitter right now, but I'm on everything yeah, else. Yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, buddy. I'm, I'm on uh, on Instagram at pzTx p e e z y t x. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, worth it. We always discuss the scams are worth it at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, totally worth it, but the best. <laughs> Uh, guys, yeah, go ahead and uh, check us out. If you like what you hear, we do two more episodes every month on our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. You get access to our Discord, our entire back catalog, and commercial-free episodes. You're going to want to check that out. Also, follow us on all the socials. We're on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at lie, cheat, steal podcast. And you can also... If you really want to support the show, the best way to do it is to go and just leave us a rating, leave us a five-star review, tell your friends about us. Guys, thanks for checking in. Thanks for listening. Be safe, be smart, but above all, don't get caught. Mm-hmm. Don't get caught.
Epcot. See you next time.